Dental insurances can be extremely confusing. Me as a dentist, when I opened my practice, it took me forever to study insurances. And even to this day, I still don't understand it perfectly, but I'm gonna to try to give you guys some tips and show you the different types of insurances there are so you can better understand what type of insurance you might have, or if you're interested in getting insurance, what type of insurance you should get. I had to give exams and quizzes and multiple questions to my staff and insurance department to have them better understand insurance. And they still don't get perfect scores. They still get some wrong because insurance is so difficult. I still think to this day that there are very few practices, probably no practices that take more than 10 insurances that aren't breaking some rules <laughs> legally too because it's that difficult. I mean, I spent hours upon hours training my staff and they still make mistakes. And I know most offices aren't gonna go into that much detail. And we've hired dental managers from other offices that did insurance, and I couldn't believe how many mistakes that they would make because people just don't know how to do it. I'm really surprised that people are allowed to make so many mistakes in dental insurance, but that is currently the situation. So let's first go over the broad different categories of insurances, and then we'll go into more detail about each of them. The first insurance, and kind of my favorite, is PPO. Depending on what you're having done at the dental office, the insurance will pay a different portion. Usually it tends to be the more expensive the procedure is, the more you have to pay, and the less the insurance has to pay. There's also a yearly maximum. There's a, a maximum amount that the insurance will pay, and after that, you have to pay the rest. Now, PPOs are considered the best insurance by both patients and dentists. Most dentists do take PPO, while the other insurances on the list, very few dentists take. And we'll go more into details about that later in the video. The next is HMOs. And this is a different type of insurance because it's not really technically insurance. We see it more as a discount plan. See, what happens is a patient gets assigned to one dental clinic. You have to pick one dental clinic and that's where you're gonna get all your work done. Whereas in all the other insurances, you can pick any dental clinic that takes your insurance to go to. And again, we'll go more into details about an HMO, but when you think of HMO, think of an extreme discount plan. And then there are discount plans. And these are exactly what you say. You're part of an organization. And then the dental office says, everybody that's a part of this organization is gonna get these prices, which are lower than their original prices. And lots of offices have discount plans in their office. We have that here at the Smile Mission. We offer the Smile Mission discount plan or Smile Mission member. You pay to become a member and once you're a member, you get extremely affordable prices. Number four is Medicare. And you can basically think about it as the government is giving free dental work to people that are older. And the last one is Medicaid. This is also free work that's given by the government. The government pays for it and it varies a ton by the state. Some states give a ton of money to Medicaid and will pay the dentist quite well. You can actually do very well in certain states by really only taking Medicaid. In other states, they barely pay anything and there's almost absolutely no way that you could take Medicaid and actually survive. The only way you can take Medicaid is basically take a hit and have it be subsidized by your other work. There are other types of insurances, but they're so rare that I'm not even gonna really mention them. As long as you understand these, this is gonna cover 99% of the dental insurances that you'd ever need to know about. So that was a quick summary. If you want more details, continue to watch and we'll go more details of each of these categories. As mentioned, PPO insurances. Consider one of the top insurances that pay you a percentage. Based on what you have done, the insurance will pay a different percentage. Most PPOs will pay 100% of exams and x-rays. So you go to the dentist, it's 100% paid for. You get some x-rays done, don't worry about it. 100% paid for. And common procedures that you have done, fillings, extractions, root canals, deep cleans, and similar things, you typically pay 20% and the insurance will pay 80% of the bill. And the big, more major procedures, crowns, dentures, the insurance will typically pay 50%, which means you have to pay the other 50%. The insurance also regulates the price of each procedure. So for example, a normal person might have to pay $100 for a cleaning and $200 for a filling. But because you have insurance, your insurance forces the dentist to accept a fee of only $60 for a cleaning and $100 for a filling. And now don't forget that $60, you don't even pay for. Your insurance paid for. And that $100 filling, you only have to pay 20%, so $20. So you only had to pay $20. Again, 
What's nice is not only are you paying 20% of the fee, your fee is lower because your insurance has negotiated with the dentist to offer lower prices. So it's a double win for people with insurance. Sometimes the insurance covers and sometimes they don't cover certain procedures. And ones that are highly likely to be questionable are bridges, replacing the missing tooth, implants, getting three or more crowns, braces, having cosmetic work done like veneers or doing something like a denture. And these just have a high likelihood of the insurance denying the claim, meaning the insurance is not gonna pay. And so in these cases, in most clinics, you're offered two choices. The first option is pay for the entire procedure without insurance. Then the dental clinic will send it to insurance and if they get the money back from the insurance, they'll reimburse you. The only problem is insurances are very slow, so that can take around two to three months. The second option is request a pre-approval. The dentist sends off to the insurance saying, we are thinking about doing this procedure. And the insurance will say, they'll either say they're gonna pay for it or they're not. And it does take about two to three weeks, but once you get that letter back, the insurance will basically do what they say. And so then the dentist can charge you the exact amount that you should pay and you don't have to worry about any reimbursements. So let's use an example again. You fell over and you broke your tooth. It needs to come out and obviously it's a front tooth. You don't wanna go missing a tooth. So you wanna replace it with an implant and crown, which will cost around 2,000. One option is to pay $2,000 and then again, have the dentist send to the insurance and if the insurance pays you back, you'll get reimbursed usually half of that that the insurance would pay. So you'd get $1,000 back. But the problem is that would take about two months or longer to get reimbursed. The other option is to send the request to the insurance showing your x-rays, your bad tooth and saying what happened and saying, will you cover this implant? Now they're not gonna cover the whole thing. Again, most insurances cover around 50% for the implant and they might come back two weeks later saying that they're gonna pay $1,000. So then instead of the dentist charging you $2,000, they're only gonna charge you $1,000 and they'll send the other $1,000 bill directly to the insurance. So you don't have to come up with $2,000, you come up with half of it. So that's kind of how it works with insurance um, with the pre-approval. And so you can choose either way. But again, for those two to three weeks, it can be kind of hard if it's a front tooth and it looks really bad because you'd have to wait two to three weeks before the dentist can really do anything to replace it. So it becomes a catch 22. Yes, you can pay less money if you wait, but then you have to wait with a broken tooth. So patients always have to make these tough decisions. And unfortunately, that's what the insurance does and makes you have to do it. It's not up to the dentist at all. The next one is HMO. And here's what's kind of weird with an HMO. The patient gets to choose an office. So they get a list of different offices. They often pick whichever office is closest to them. And whichever office they pick, the dental clinic will get anywhere between three to $5 a month for accepting that patient. And that's all that the insurance is paying. And then when the patient goes into the office, they just get extremely cheap fees. So instead of paying say, $200 for a filling, they might only have to pay $60. Now the insurance isn't paying the other 140, the insurance isn't paying anything. It's just a, basically a discounted plan plus getting a monthly amount per patient that's assigned to you. So a lot of clinics that take HMOs try to get a bunch of patients assigned to them, say two to 3,000 so that they can get a nice monthly check, but then they try to avoid doing any work. So it's really unethical because again, the fees are so low that the best way of making money is to not see the patients that were assigned to them. Another scammy trick that I've seen that other dental clinics have done is they will make up procedure codes. Again, you have extremely discounted on the most common procedures, extractions, fillings, cleanings, but the dentist will make up a procedure. They'll say after an extraction, which might be $30, we have to cure at the socket for $100. Now a normal patient, they never charge that for it, but for an HMO patient, they're gonna charge this extra fee because that's not on the insurance list. And by not being on the insurance list, they can charge whatever they want. So maybe the extraction normally charged 130, but now because they charge this extra fee, they're getting the same amount if they had an HMO or not. I don't even know if this is legal. I have just had patients come to my office and show me these extra charges that they get because they had an HMO. But in general, an HMO is a very bad insurance to get because it's an extreme discount plan and it encourages the dentist not to treat you. If they see something small, there's no benefit for the dentist to tell you. And as you know, even though you wanna think that most people care about your best interest, at the end of the day, most people care about themselves the most. And so 
if it's gonna take them extra time and they're not gonna really make money, they could even lose money, they're probably just gonna ignore it and not even let you know. So be careful if you have an HMO. The next one is Medicare. It's interesting because it's unique, different than all the rest. It's even different than Medicaid. See, the government pays the full amount, but they limit how many procedures you can have done per year. Most people might get like a root canal, just one, maybe one or two extractions, maybe three or four fillings. And it's hard to know every patient, even people on the same Medicare plan can have different amounts of procedures. And you also have to keep track, did they go to a different dentist? The patient doesn't have to pay anything, but once they get maxed out, then they have to start paying. It does pay better than your regular Medicaid insurance, but it's very tricky because you have to keep track of everything. So a lot of dentists will send pre-approval for anything being done under Medicare, or they'll go on the phone and, and of course it's government. So you can be on the phone for one to two hours or maybe even longer to see how many procedures this patient has left. So it's a very frustrating procedure and it's really hard to keep track. Um, and technically there's not that many people on Medicare. When we took Medicare, it never was that many patients. We just had a few per week that we would see. Medicaid, this is government insurance for low income people. Basically patients get free dental work and it varies a lot by the state. Some states give a ton of money to Medicaid. You can do very well by only accepting Medicaid and other states give very, very little. And dentists either have to be scammy or take a loss by taking Medicaid. There are also different rules. Some procedures might be covered for pregnant patients or if you're under 21. We tried to take Medicaid here in Florida and it was literally impossible and I refused to do any scammy or unethical things. I made an entire video about it and I'll link it in the description below if you wanna know more about our experience with Medicaid. But it was crazy, cleanings were just $18, extractions were just 20. And there was many times that Medicaid didn't even pay us. We lost so much money on every Medicaid patient and it just, it kind of sucks. I wanted to help out, but it just, it just did not work. On a positive note, hopefully this has cleared up a little confusion you might have about dental insurances, the different types of dental insurances there are and how they can be used at different dental offices.